So hello, welcome to my podcast. Um, if you want to introduce yourself, tell me a little bit about yourself, your name, your job, stuff like that, you know the drill. Thank you, Charlotte. So my name's Nina Copley. That is my name now, but my stage name was Nina Dilly. I used to be a stage manager, no longer currently doing that. I'm now um, a freelance event manager. So I've transitioned from doing stage management and live theatre to now doing events and parties. I was a stage manager from leaving university in 1998 to 2006. Yeah, I didn't know that it was actually till 2006. I remember coming to, um, was it like Lion the Witch in the Ro- Wardrobe or something? Oh, maybe. I'm sure me and Abby came to something and I, I do I do remember it, but it's the only thing I ever remember from when you were doing it. <laughs> Where did you study when you were at uni? So I studied at Rose Bruford College in Sickup in London. So it's um, a, a drama school and I studied a BA Honours in Stage Management, which I qualified in 1998. Was it a three-year course like normal? Yes, three years, yeah. And we, we covered... Um, all aspects. It was very practical, but lots of uh, also written. So um, even from the very, very first year, we were doing productions. We learned to sew, we learned to make sets, we learned about lighting, sound. As a stage manager, it's really important to cover all backgrounds of theatre. So we had to learn every aspect of it, every department. So we used to go and I think it was a week or two weeks in each department and learning a skill from that department. And then uh, as time moved on, well, we, we focused on the stage management side, but you had to learn everything first of all. Um, what made you want to do like stage management in particular? Like what, like why? Yeah, it's a good question. I knew from really, really young that I wanted to do theatre. So my dad, your granddad, he, got me involved in the amateur dramatics in Brig House. So it was a Brig House amateur and dramatics. Um, and I knew it was backstage. I knew I didn't want to be on the stage. So I started with them, I think I was 13. And I would do a bit of uh, props and uh, makeup and various different bits and pieces. And um, there was an amazing uh, chap called Ernest Ainley. I still remember his name to this day, who was the stage manager. He was an older chap and he was the stage manager. And I used to watch him in awe and think oh what an amazing job I want to do that I then um did my GCSEs and then I decided I really wanted to do this um, but I didn't want to do acting so I didn't stay on at school I went to Calderdale College in Halifax who had a performing arts BTEC course which was all very practical and so I went there and didn't I kind of knew I wanted to do stage management but I didn't really know for definite I just knew I wanted to be backstage so that course covered again all aspects of backstage and theatre and it was a two year course. Um, and then in my final year, my tutor, Neil, can't remember his surname, Neil, just said, you're good at the stage management side, why don't you specialize in this? So then for my last year, every time we did a production, I always did the stage management side of things. And then he was the one who said, go on to uni and take this, take this path. And it, it was the right one. Did you go sh- so straight from uni did you just go straight to West Yorkshire Playhouse or where what was like so yeah so so I went to the West Yorkshire Playhouse from university well whilst I was at university so in our third year we had to do a placement and I got my placement at the West Yorkshire Playhouse and we were they were doing a show called spend 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 and I arrived um midway through rehearsals um and was sort of there because at the West Church Players, they would have a, they have a company manager, a stage manager, a deputy stage manager, and assistant stage manager. And so I wasn't quite an assistant stage manager because I was I was on placement, but I took the the role of the second assistant stage manager. Uh, I stayed through rehearsals and then I stayed in the tech week and did the production. And actually, 
got lots and lots of cues and became a little bit um, of they couldn't they couldn't do without me because I was um, I'd got so many cues for the show, uh, so they kept me on a little bit uh, longer until they could then hire in a replacement crew member to come and take over. And then I went back to university and finished my degree. But I built a really good relationship with them there at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. So the company manager knew me really well. And so then when I finished my degree and I came home, there wasn't a job at first. Um, so I went and worked at the Victoria Theatre in Halifax. Yeah. And I did stage crew. So I was doing flying, I was doing rigging. There was a lot of, they have sort of a lot of music, or they did, <laughs> the, a lot of music concerts and things. Yeah. So I used to do a lot of the get-ins with the, and do sort of late shift. I used to operate full of spot, sound, all sorts. Um, did the panto there for them, uh, where I was sort of, I wasn't state, I wasn't assistant stage manager, but I was just crew member. And I did various different things from flying scenery in to moving scenery on stage, dressing, some of the actors so I did that for a while and then I think it was in the following year there was a position came up at the West Yorkshire Playhouse and they rang me and said we've got a position for an assistant stage manager if you're interested you'll have to come for an interview and that's what I did and I, and I got the job. So you've done a mixture of things within the theatre then I suppose? Yeah well as, as a stage manager you kind of do because when you when you're running a production you have to know what everybody does. So I was assistant stage manager at the West Yorkshire Players and then I became a deputy stage manager, which is completely different again. Um, you sat in rehearsals, you, you you have the Bible and you, you know, everything that happens, you have all that, you have all the cues, you pass all the information. So when you're in rehearsals and the actors or the director might say they need something specific or they're wanting to know how a piece of scenery works. If you've not experienced or have the knowledge of all the aspects of backstage, then you can't give guidance on how things work or are going to be operated. So it's like you've got, so, you've got to do all the like little bits before you get to it. So. You do, yeah, absolutely. So you have to... Work yeah, way. exactly. Work work your way up. So you start as sort of your assistant stage manager, and then and then as you progress, you're able to move up. And but they're all very different. So an assistant stage manager's its own roles uh, as the deputy stage, and then the stage manager. They're all very different. They all interlink, but they're all very different um, and just as valid. So it, an assistant stage manager is just as important as the stage manager. It's a different job. Stage manager person, you all come together to like make one person so it all goes absolutely yeah you all interlink so the stage manager's on the deck running the show the deputy stage manager is generally sat with the headset on calling the show um and then the assistant stage manager is usually on the deck as well looking after all the crew and operating all the props and just sort of managing everything on the deck pushing scenery on and off if it needs to be moved i didn't realize there were so many like different parts to it. i mean to be honest i didn't know that much about the role anyway but like I didn't realize that there was actually so many different aspects to it I suppose. Yeah and it's you know it's it's a really key piece to to the production without the stage management team a production it, it can happen but you need the stage management team because what we do is we are like the central part of the production so we pull everything together it's all paperwork there's a lot of paperwork in stage management so it's a lot of lists and spreadsheets and organizing and planning and you know we have we have all the detail even from the designs of the set we would have the designs of the set we would you know we're the ones that lay it out in a rehearsal room so if you were to be rehearsing for a production it would be a stage management team that's put all the markings out on the floor measured it all up so you have to understand how to read a ground plan and all of it so that's you know there's masses and masses to to learn and understand yeah. about the role what um shows have you worked on like any ones that stood out more like that you enjoyed doing or um i've done a mixture of shows but i think i really loved musicals I loved musical theatres because they were busy really really busy so your dramas and your shakespeare's and things are quite they're not easy don't get me wrong but they are um there's not as many elements to it but your musicals you've got not just your actors and your dancers You've got your musicians, you've got, you know, the band. There's usually a lot of moving scenery. You need to be able to read music 
to do stage management for musicals because you have to read a score because the lighting director may, might say, I want you to cue a piece of lighting to happen on this particular note. Um, so if you can't read music, then you won't be able to do that. Um, and they're usually really, really busy. There's lots of things going on. And that's fun. That's fun to work on because you're not, um, for a stage manager, you can, once the show's up and running, if it's a drama, just be sat about a lot. Um, because you might not have very many cues, but for a musical, you are constantly busy. And when I was calling shows, so when I was the DSM, they were also the fun ones to do, where you'd be like, oh my goodness, I've got to... Sometimes you weren't even able to get out the, the queue numbers because it was so busy. So you might say, right, I'm going to have to prep you all for this because I can't... Because the music is so quick, you're not able to always say. So you'd just be saying, go, 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 go. And people would have to know when they were going and it would all be on queue lights. And So musicals were my favourite. <laughs> the musical that always stands out is Singing in the Rain because I did it so many times. I did it at the West Church Playhouse twice. Uh, we, we took it to the National and then I toured with it. So I did something for a year. So I did something like, I remember counting at one point and going, oh, this is my 600 and something performance of Singing in the Rain. And now I sort of get a bit of a shudder sometimes when I think about it because it's it was great. It was a good show to work on because we had live water, we had real rain. Uh, we were one of the very first productions to ever have real rain, proper real rain, because the whole stage rained. It wasn't just a little section, the whole stage rained. I made a big water trough and I mean, it was a, it was a bit of a nightmare because when we toured a raining production into lots of different theatres, people didn't quite like it. It was, it was a bit of a headache, but... Um, what a difference when you toured, like your, did your jobs change? A fair bit from like stage to stage and stuff when you were touring with it or was it pretty much the same all the time? Uh, it was the same but you had to adapt so um, the theatre size changed so the stage would change in size so I remember we went to Edinburgh and it wasn't our first one but we'd gone from a massive theatre I think we went from Plymouth to Edinburgh and Plymouth was a distance is massive just in journey time but the size of the theatre so Plymouth is a massive theatre and Singing in the Rain stage was huge and then we went to Edinburgh which is this one of the smallest theatres in the country and we had to put this enormous stage into a tiny theatre and I remember the um, the chippies and the carpenters and um, the team going for the fit up I never I wasn't always there in the fit up we used to arrive the day after um to then set all the props up and I remember arriving and them saying we can't make it fit and they'd had to cut so much away that the dancers when the dancers came there wasn't even enough room on the stage for the dancers to fit because it was like um I think we had 25 30 dancers and some of the pieces the choreographer was having a bit of a headache trying to re-jig the whole uh, how everyone was was spaced out and yeah so that was that was quite challenging but generally from move we moved every two weeks um so we'd have to pack it all up on a saturday night uh, and then we would move and then we would the chippies would be at the next venue on the monday um because it traveled on the sunday monday they would fit up and i think we arrived on the tuesday <laughs> and then the dancers and actors arrived I think on the Wednesday um, and then we'd have yeah on the Wednesday we'd have a quick tech on the Wednesday I think we opened th Thursday I might have been open Wednesday night it was very quick turnaround every time we went to a new theatre we had a new team of crew so that was tough because it was a busy show for the crew yeah. so that was really tricky we had to um, prep them all so I had cue sheets so I used to arrive with all the cue sheets and we'd say to the crew right this is I had one side, there was two, I was an ASM on that one and I was one side and Toby was the other side and we had a team each um, and we just ran off, ran our team. But we had to know, both Toby and I had to know in our heads what every crew member's role was because they didn't know it. So we, we had our own jobs, but we had to know theirs inside out. You did a lot on your shoulders really when you think about it. But then yeah, but exciting. Yeah, because if you were just like sat with only like a few things to do, you'd soon get bored of it. But if you're constantly on your tour, you're still... And it did keep it fresh, moving every two weeks. It kept it fresh um, because then it was a whole new team of people. You're in a new city. So, yeah, it was fun. What didn't you like about like when you were 
measure what bits were the bits you tried to shove off to other people. <laughs> I don't think there was anything that I ever tried to not do as part of the job. There wasn't any bit that I didn't like as part of the job. I loved it all. Like it was a it was a real um, passion rather than a job. Um, so I never stressed about doing a 90 hour week and working really late hours and I never that side of never, things never worried me or I didn't like I think it was if I worked with somebody I didn't like that was the biggest so if you got a director that you just didn't get along with and you had to sit every day in rehearsals with and you just didn't gel that was hard work or an actor that was particularly difficult <laughs> to work with and to handle those are the those are the elements of the job that I didn't like. Yeah. One person in particular, and um, he's passed away now. Uh, but yeah, I I did. He wasn't a very nice man, and he wasn't nice to anybody. And everybody who had to work with him didn't mm. like him, and that was really tough because um, he just wasn't nice. Mm. I was going to say, what job roles do you work closely with? But you just work with everyone so close. Everyone. But I suppose um, to be fair, if you're a DSM, so a deputy stage manager, you work really close with the director. Um, you become almost like their PA All right, okay. because you, especially, I mean, some of the directors that I worked with relied on me so heavily that I would be planning the rehearsal schedule for them. You know, you, you literally were the PA or if they needed to go to a meeting, they'd be saying to you, I'm a free, can I do that meeting? What have we got going on this week? Because um, we often had production meetings during lunch, lunch breaks quick meetings in between you might have interviews things like that so you kind of held their diary as well so as a dsm really really closely with the director as the stage manager you would work really closely with the production manager who sort of oversees all the production team and as an asm basically you're your, your stage management team but then the actors because you become their support on the stage as well as an asm the actors rely on you for quite a lot they would come to you it, not just for work for personal things sometimes yeah. especially when you're on tour yeah if you're working closely you get to know people on like a personal level rather than just yeah level. yeah and you all became not just colleagues friends you know and, and that you carry on sometimes you didn't because you might sometimes only be with people for eight weeks and then you move on and next job but in that eight weeks you're really really close you're like a big family and then you move on and you get another big family because you've got to be because if you didn't gel the show wouldn't work you have to be close to people for an audience to want to watch it it has to be enjoyable and if you're not enjoying doing it then it would be obvious to see do you have any like best bits like of the job like were there anything in particular that you were like oh i love doing that or um i suppose because stage management is split into so sort of three roles i think the dsming was my favorite part and probably my favorite part was calling the show and you know tell literally telling everybody when to go so you're you know you're in charge you get the the call from front of house to say the audience are in and you you've put everybody on standby and you're the one that starts it no you know nobody else starts the show it's not like the actor just walks on stage and starts it or so that was you know it's a big responsibility I quite I enjoyed that I did enjoy calling the show it was one of the most exciting things I think about it but just the whole thing generally coming together I love to see it from rehearsal to, to the finished article and you, you were sat there you felt there was a big sense of pride when you did that first production with a full audience in but yeah calling the show I think is probably what I enjoyed the most. Is there anything that like shouldn't have happened or like a funny story or a memory that was like oh, <laughs> I've done that or I don't know something that were just funny in general that's maybe not been there was loads 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 and loads of things that you know from the sets not working uh one particular show i was pregnant with grace actually well there's a few things when i was pregnant with grace when i did a show uh that are quite memorable but one one it was called assassins was the show and um it was at sheffield crucible and this set used to have, it used to come up from the substage, uh, one, one part of it, there was sort of little trap doors that opened and, and um, different pieces of scenery used to come up. And one particular time, um, it was meant to be a car and uh, Gerald was the actor, he was sat in behind the steering wheel and he, 
the trap came up, but it didn't fully come up. So all we had was his head literally just above the stage and it was meant to be his whole body. They were saying to me on the cans, oh, we can't get it to go up. We can't get, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And of course the show must always go on. You never stop a show. And so I said, well, we can't put the lights up because there's no set there. It will just look horrendous. <laughs> so Gerald, who was just an amazing actor, um, he, of course, he, he can't hear that this is all going on, but he knows that there's something going on uh, because there's a delay in everything, a delay in the lights coming up. And uh, basically I, I said to the follow spot operator, can you can you get a follow spot on Gerald's head? Uh, and that's what we did. So we, we kept all the lights off. Um, and again, I've got, I was having to make those decisions. It was my call because I was the only one that really knew the show well enough to to say what to do. Along with the stage manager, they, you know, they were saying, Nina, can we, is there any way we can continue or do I need to go on stage and stop the show? What do we need to do? Um, so yeah, we put a follow spot on him and it was literally just, I said, just put the smallest spot on his head. Uh, and he, it was a, it was a monologue. So he just did it. And then fortunately, um, the tr trap went back down. So, it, um, and then we could just sort of carry on and then it would be interval and we managed to fix it. But various different things like that have happened where piece of scenery hasn't worked or is trapped or we had a fire on one show fire was it like a drill or was yeah it? we had no it was a real fire yeah so we, we had to stop the show and actually the show then was cancelled because um all the dimmer racks this was on singing in the rain we were in southampton um all the dimmer racks just went up in flames uh, and i was stood at the other side of the stage and i watched it happen i went oh my god <laughs> the stage is on fire uh so we had to bring the iron in and um, Toby got the fire extinguisher, put the fire out because he was literally stood behind it. And um, yeah, then, uh, it, well, they were in a mess. So we, we had to cancel a couple of performances for that. So yeah, lots and lots of funny things kind of always happen. And so many, so many to, to even kind of tell you about really. Well, I didn't know half of that stuff. <laughs> You're just like following what I'm told. To. I'm just like, I'm right at the bottom of the food chain when you think about it, being a dancer. Like, I just, I get told everything else from you, I suppose, like passed down the lines. Yeah, as a dancer and, and an actor, you, you know, you've got your role, which is really important. And um, everything else is then, is then built around you, as it were, you know, so, um you have yours is just as important role you're the one that's you know in front of everybody in front of everybody's eyes so if things do go wrong um on a stage actually it's not us backstage that's seen it's kind of you guys as well so you're the ones that have to put the put the face on or get it cope with those things um but yeah no every, everybody's role within theater no matter what you do is really important from your front of house team to your cleaners, it, it just couldn't happen without everybody. And so what's one of the brilliant things about theatre from any job that you could possibly do, everybody works together as a big team and you are a family and everybody respects each other. There's never, you know, oh, your job's not valid, your job's not important because that's just not how it works. Everybody's job is just as important as each other. So there's no hierarchy in theatre, even the director, you know, the director really is, is the top, the producer and the director are the top of the, the, the table, as it were. It's very rare that you get anybody that is, um, creates that very hierarchy, like I'm in charge sort of thing. When theatre comes back, what are you most excited for? Is it, or is there anything? Uh, yeah, I can't wait to go back. I really, I really want to go back and see something. Um, yeah, we were due to go at Christmas um, to see. Um, oh gosh, it was at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. I can't remember. A Scrooge, I think it was. Um, and we ended up watching the live live stream instead. So yeah, just getting back to to live theatre, going and seeing, going supporting it because. We've had such a bad time with, you know, a lot of my friends have been out of work and not been able to work. Some, some of them have been very fortunate, but it's a lot that have not been able to. So going back and sitting in the theatre and, and enjoying it. And I think when I go to the theatre now, I really enjoy it. When I, when I still went to the theatre when I was working, I was always watching what was happening, 
and all oh, that lights that lighting cue was late or I you know I was looking at the set and things like that whereas now I go and actually enjoy the show and I I'm not thinking about the lights and the sound and if the DSM's queuing it have you been to any other theatres and seen anything um I'm trying to think well we went we went to um Shrek at the Grand mm-hmm that was at Christmas time, but like when, like obviously pre-COVID, so that yeah. was the thing I saw there. But Leeds, like there's always something going on in Leeds. Uh, yeah, didn't lots like, of culture. It's called the Creative Quarter, it's Quarry Hill, that's what they refer to it as. So there's obviously <sighs> music, there's Northern Ballet, and there's obviously Playhouse and all them within Phoenix. the mix. The creative quarter is Quarry Hill. That's what they say. So oh, amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's it, it's great. I mean, there's other there's other places as well. Like um, Liverpool's amazing. Again, um, for what they've got going on there, they've got lots of theatre, lots of cultural stuff happening in Liverpool. It's a great. It's another really good city to yeah to go and work at. Well, there's loads. There's so many good theatres. Um, I think it's great as well if it's um there's a rep theatre, which is what Leeds Playhouse is, it's a rep theatre. You've got your touring houses, so like Leeds Grand is only touring house, so they don't produce any work. It's all coming from somewhere. So you've got your touring houses and then you've got your rep theatre. Um, and there's not very many rep theatres around. Um, and the original rep theatre used to actually have um, a team of actors so like at the West Dutch Playhouse they've got a full team of all the technical staff that are you know permanently employed as the stage managers but the actors are all contracted and freelance and um, there's not many theatres that do that even like the theatres I worked at Liverpool and Sheffield there were you weren't um, I was contracted I wasn't um, employees there's not very very many rep theatres but originally really years and years ago all your dancers and your actors were employed on a salary you weren't contracted in um, but that doesn't exist anymore I remember I was a lot younger and I went for an audition at um, West Yorkshire Play I was thinking about it for the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and then it was for one of the children um, I didn't get it but it was one of my first ever auditions and that were for there and I never thought about it like that. You don't go for auditions at actual theatres. Normally you go to like a studio and audition all that sort of way. But we did actually go to the Playhouse and did it in there. And I've not, I've, I've not actually thought about that since then. Yeah, so you often find that if you are, if they want a chorus or something like that, then they 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 might hire local, local uh, especially for children, um, they hire local so they would audition but more often than not like you say um especially well it's different for dancers and actors but um your casting director would be picking out of literally a book um and saying oh that one that person looks to fit and it's all to do with looks that person looks like they're the right height the right color the right shape um and then and then you will go and audition and they'll pick so many of of people and your agents would put you forward because your agents know certain casting directors it is good like obviously being on my way into the industry seeing now like ex-pupils and stuff they are slowly getting contracts back and stuff so it's nice to know that the theatre is coming back we are coming mm. it's just a shame it can't be sooner than what the same oh absolutely it you know it will come back it's 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 been the theatre's been around for such a long length of time it will come back because it's you know it's an art that will never be lost everybody loves live theatre and it's I think this has proved it when it's not been around how many people have missed it um that it is needed because there was you know there's all the jokes at one point with the government saying oh bal retrain from being a ballet dancer to an accountant and you know all of those horrible ads that we all saw um but you know it, it's proved that well, not just not just theatre, but live events, music events, festivals are needed. There are entertainment, and us as a society cannot just live off television, you know, or, or cinema. We all need um, the live element, and it's a massive industry. It's, I can't, it's billions. It's worth billions and billions as a theatre industry. So yeah, it will come back, and uh, you know, I'm sure everybody will be out supporting it when they can. 
Well, um, thank you for joining me. I've That's definitely okay. more than what I thought I was going to. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but yeah, thank you. You're welcome.